How you doing? I'm Mike Shu, and I'm sitting here with quite possibly the uh, the hardest working man in show business, the busiest anyway, Mr. Warren Haynes. Uh, you might know his work from Government Mule uh, or solo work or his work with the Almonds or uh, the Dead or Corrosion of Conformity or Les Claypool. I mean, the list is, uh, is could be a few pages long. Uh, but we're here at Symphony Hall tonight for the Jerry Garcia Symphonic Celebration. And I think it's uh, interesting that um, you're taking the music of Jerry Garcia and the Grateful Dead and working with an orchestra with it. Also that you're working with the Boston Pops, who, much like yourself, uh, I guess you could say, push the boundaries of music through collaboration. And um, uh, what brought about this? This is the second... I guess, performance, because you did one last year at Tanglewood. So what was the, the catalyst of working together on this project? Well, the Boston Pops are uh, just a, a very unique, wonderful uh, symphony, and working with, with Keith Lockhart, the, uh, the conductor, we had a great experience in Tanglewood last year when we did this. And so we were looking for a reason to do it again. Uh, as far as the overall picture of playing the music of Jerry Garcia with a symphony, I wish I could take credit for the idea. It wasn't my idea. It came from the people who represent uh, Jerry's estate. They called me in 2012 to find out if I would be interested in doing this, and I said, yeah, I would be absolutely honored. As I mentioned to you, I've never worked with a symphony before last year, and it's something I've always kind of looked forward to but had never done. <laughs> Was it you alone who was in charge of choosing the songs for this uh, for the symphonic celebration? Yeah, I chose the material, and I sent we we picked three arrangers, and I sent uh, my arrangement ideas to the arrangers for the symphony. And uh, the first call I made when I des decided that I was going to do this was I called Phil Lesh because he knows more about classical music than anybody I know, and so I. Uh, kind of ran the whole concept by him and told him about the arrangers we were considering. We had a big long list and he helped me choose the arrangers and who would be good for what songs and that sort of thing. Uh, the reason we chose three is so not one person would have the load of doing all the arrangements because there's a lot of music. Yeah, the, there's such a vast amount of music from the Grateful Dead and Jerry Solo and the music, the songs he's kind of associated with. So what did you look for uh, specifically in those songs? I felt like the most important aspect of this for me was to uh, pick the material that married to a symphony the best, that uh, the songs that would be elevated to another dimension by having an orchestra. So that was more important than which songs were my favorite or which ones I really loved to sing. Uh, both of those things obviously played into it, but most importantly, which songs would take on a whole other complexion when you heard them with an orchestra. And there were a few that I eliminated, even some songs that I really loved, like Casey Jones and U.S. Blues. Uh, I didn't feel like adding a symphony uh, was a plus in those cases. I felt like, you know... Uh, certain types of songs work and certain types of songs don't. The more straight ahead rock songs don't work and the more straight ahead country songs don't work, but the ones that are uh, a little more uh, influenced by decades and decades of songwriting seem to uh, be the best. Thank you. 
there's something like a bird within her sing. Sang a little while and then flew on. Tell me all that you know, I'll show you storm and rain. I noticed that I was fortunate enough to sit in rehearsal in the hall and songs like Black Peter and um, West LA Fade Away that one actually with this with the strings reminded me of kind of like 70s Marvin yeah. Gaye kind of yeah. that Motown 70s or like the un, uh, the undisputed truth something yeah. with like a lot of strings and it completely changed the song for me and then with Black Peter there was that kind of New Orleans kind of shuffling drum and it, it just kind of made the song new which was pretty amazing. Yeah, Black Peter uh, takes on this whole kind of New Orleans-y uh, funeral dirge vibe, which is what the marching in the streets and yeah. the second line and all that, where, where a lot of New Orleans music came from. And the arrangement for that is, is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And you're right about uh, West L.A. It reminds me of like... Uh, like Curtis Mayfield or yes. something. Uh, yes. It's that era. And that's one of the reasons that I chose it because I was going to eliminate it because it's a, a kind of a blues song. And for the most part, I, I wasn't picking the blues songs. But for that song, it seemed to uh, bring make it more era specific, you know, yeah. and it brings out the lyric and makes the lyric more like a movie soundtrack to like, uh, you know, some like B plus yeah, movie yeah like or a, something. some shaft or yeah. something. It That's really has exactly that vibe what I was to thinking. it. Yeah. 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 Uh, were there any that you chose and maybe surprised you that worked or, or surprised you that didn't work? Uh, I thought about some songs like uh, Mississippi Half Step uh, and, and I abandoned it because it seemed too one dimensional. It didn't seem like the, the, the symphony arrangement was making uh, any sense or that was taking it any further um all the ones that we chose tended to work really well and some of them uh i guess surprised me uh there were obvious ones like terrapin station where there was a symphony on the original version so i chose that to get back to something that the the dead never really did they never uh did that on the road i thought it would be nice to bring that back um you know, and we have four or five new songs that we're adding this year that I'm excited about as well. Have you said you spoke to <clears throat> Phil Lesh before you you got into the project? Have those any of those guys had a chance to hear it the first time around, or will they be able to this time around? Have they given you any feedback on that? Uh, Bob Weir came and joined me for two of the nights in San Francisco, um, one of which was Jerry's birthday, and Bob and Jeff Cominti, who is the keyboard player in the Dead. Uh, came and joined me and they played with the symphony and then we the hall was kind enough uh, to let us continue playing after the symphony left the stage and so both nights we played like a little extra special show without the symphony uh, with Bob and Jeff after after the symphony was over so those were both very memorable nights um, and I think Phil's heard some of the recordings uh, but it's uh, I think everybody's uh, hopefully psyched that we're trying to do something with the music that's uh, never been done that I think uh, is a worthy thing. Yeah, that's kind of like what every Dead show was, trying to find some place that was has, they've never been before, kind of. And I yeah. guess, yeah. And, uh, and from talking to uh, to some of the family, it seems like Jerry had ideas about hearing some of his music with a symphony and uh, and, and it never happened so it, it's kind of nice in that regard as well Sing blue. Hang your heart on laughing willow straight down to the water deep sea of love beneath the sweet, calm face of the sea Swim under tow Life may be sweeter for this, I don't know See how it feels 
you think this will be since this is like kind of the second round of shows you think this might be a regular thing an annual thing or uh, something that will you'll come back to that the with the symphonies well when the idea was first presented to me they wanted to know if I would be interested in being the first guest artist meaning that they want to continue this with some other artists and I'd love to see that happen uh, each artist would pick different material different arrangements different arrangers uh, if some of them wanted to use these arrangements, they would be welcome. Um, but I'd love to see that happen as well. And I, I wouldn't rule out I wouldn't rule out doing doing it again myself. But I'd like to see some other people give it a whirl. Uh, as far as collaborations go, um, what has been in your vast experience here with working with other people? What has been the most challenging? And when I say challenging, maybe the most musically satisfying. Uh, you mean looking at the whole big picture? Yeah, uh, yes, that's, that's a, possible. There's, I know there's different moments and different artists yeah, mean different things. It's hard for me to to pinpoint, you know, there have been such, uh, I mean, working with the Alma Brothers, working with the Dead, working with the Symphony um, are all huge opportunities for me that I've really, really enjoyed a lot. Uh, and and having Government Mule as a laboratory to do anything we want to do has, has been amazing. As far as like sitting in with other artists or working together on a you know a, like a momentary project or something working with bob dylan or eric clapton or people like uh, uh john lee hooker who passed away i was fortunate to to play with him i've been very lucky that uh on a long list of people i would have wanted to play with i've been been able to check most of them off and and uh i feel very fortunate in that regard and all the different things that I do have led me to other opportunities and I'm happy to kind of uh, bounce back and forth yeah it's quite the resume is, is there is there anyone you want to work with in the future you're, you're still that's on that list well uh, there are people like Neil Young and, and uh, Tom Waits and, and people like that that uh, I admire as artists and songwriters that I've never actually done anything with and I would, you know, obviously say yes if something like that were to come about, but it's not something that I've pursued. You just kind of wait for the wait for the offer. <laughs> well, you know, do what you do and see what happens. Right. Um, I, I want to touch on the Allman Brothers briefly again, and I know we talked about it on the phone, and, and you stated that, um, well, you thought that this would be the last year uh, and that uh, you all agreed that you didn't want it to become a nostalgia act, but then some members of the band, I guess, had a change of heart. Um, would that mean that you will continue with the band, or are you still going to uh, depart at the end of this year? Well, my prediction is that the band will uh, stop touring at the end of this year. It's something we've been talking about for about three years now. And, uh, you know... The Allman Brothers is a unique band in the way that improvisation is such a huge part of what we do and what the band has always done. And long shows, long shows that are very intense. Uh, they're not my words when I say that the band has always said that if, if it were to ever see the threat of becoming a nostalgia act, it would want to stop. That's something I've been hearing from the original members since I joined the band 25 years ago. And thankfully, that hasn't happened, but I'm sure we could all uh, agree that it, it's nice to uh, kind of predict that at some point it would and, and go out on a high note before that happens. And, and a lot of bands could continue playing their songs and play their hit songs, you know, uh, well after the, their prime, so to speak. But I don't think the Allman Brothers Band has ever considered itself that kind of band. It's always considered itself a band that that leaves everything on the stage every night and is always looking to break new ground. And and uh, you know, we all love playing together. We all have such a enormous amount of love and respect for the music that the band has created from the very beginning that you know i think it's it's something we could that we can all agree on but uh it looked like we were all in agreement and some people were starting to vacillate a little bit but we'll see you know i mean i'm i'm 
happy whatever happens you know I'm, I wish nothing but the best for the band they're one of my favorite bands of all times when I was nine years old that love affair started and, and he ended up playing with them for over 20 you years know, that's amazing 25 years yeah. I, I feel like what an amazing opportunity but uh, I think Derek and I and and uh, some of the other members as well feel like that you know it's, it's good to go out go out on a high note maybe a symphonic almonds performance uh, like this uh, the, some of the music yeah. like i'd like to hear dreams with an orchestra behind it that would be pretty amazing well, you know, uh, greg did an orchestra tour back in the 70s and they recorded it and it was beautiful i i, I would love to hear him do something uh with a symphony you know and he i think he did something recently with a symphony in georgia uh, a lot of his solo work is perfect for that you know and i think Greg loves doing his own thing. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of reached a point where all the members enjoy doing what they do outside of the Allman Brothers, and in some ways, even more. Um, so, you know, it's it's odd that it's not a personal thing, it's not a political thing. Uh, it's, it's just that most of us feel like it's the right thing to do. Right. It just feels right. That's yeah. what it's about. That's what yeah. the Allman Brothers are about, like the, like the dead. It feels right. Yeah, and, and you know, you can't rule out anything. You know, if the, if the if the band wants to do a reunion in the in the future, that uh, uh, I think there are a lot of possibilities for how to go about that. You know, but you know, again, it's it's something that we we've been talking about for a long, long time, and. When Derek and I released our press release, it was based on the fact that we agreed on something and then we made plans accordingly. And so we we're just kind of honoring that. And, uh, you know, it's been a really difficult decision because we all love the music so much and love playing together so much that it's, it's never going to be an easy decision to make. So finally, what's next for you? you, you uh, you're doing the, the Jerry Garcia Symphonic Celebrations. Uh, you said you were going to do a few gigs with the, with the Mule. Um, so after this, what, what's the next project for Warren Haynes? Um, we're going to continue to promote the new government Mule record, Shout, which came out in uh, which is late Which September. is really amazing, by the way. Oh, I love you. the whole concept of bringing in the other vote no offense yeah, but toots hibbert man uh, you know and, and bringing in elvis costello again always surprising with your collaborations and, and that was that's just a great idea we love the new record and we're very proud of it and want to continue promoting it for a long time we've been going uh to a lot of places we've never been we we just did australia and japan we got a, another european tour cur coming up uh as far as after that's all over you know uh another government mule record uh, which you know we we really love playing together and and the the chemistry that we have right now is is wonderful. I'd love to do another solo record, but it'll probably be quite different from my last one, which was Man in Motion. All right, well, Warren, again, thanks for letting us invade your space here at Symphony <laughs> Hall. Thank you for taking the time with us, sure. Warren Haynes. And uh, tonight at Symphony Hall, it is the Jerry Garcia Symphonic Celebration, and uh, looking forward to that. And good luck. Thank you. Thanks. How you doing? I'm Mike Shu. We're here with, uh, do I address you as Maestro? Oh, please don't. Keep this one. Around. I know, you're wearing tie-dye. It's hard to say. Hey, <laughs> Maestro. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is uh, Keith Lockhart, conductor of the Boston Pops. Thank you very much for taking the time with us today. It's my pleasure, Mike. Great to be here. And, you know, this is going to be an amazing event here at Symphony Hall. It is. I was watching a little bit of the rehearsal. It was just beautiful. Some of the songs I'm very familiar with, and, and it just, they came out as completely different songs. Now, what was your first reaction when you were presented with this project? Well, you know, honestly, I was a little skeptical because, I mean, what I know of The Grateful Dead and Jerry Garcia's output, I never thought of it in an orchestral context. But as I studied more what they've done, which is really beautiful, and that's really what makes the show work, is the great arrangements that were created for it. You know, it really does actually kind of create the same kind of ambiance, the same feeling, the same through line that uh, The Dead tried to do in their concerts. It's, it really is great for adding that kind of sound cloud sort of thing, and it gives more texture than you know anything short of 75 musicians couldn't give. 
I was commenting with Warren earlier that um, some of the songs came across as like a 70s Motown feel from the original, uh, specifically uh, West LA Fadeaway and Black Peter had that New Orleans kind of thing going to it. And Were you involved in the arrangements at all? No, but he, they uh, enlisted three of the best arrangers, people, at least two of them the Pops uses regularly for other projects we have, guys who really get contemporary sounds and how to translate them into the orchestra, which is, which is a tough thing and not everybody can do. A lot of times if you take you know, a rock tune and change it into an orchestra piece, it ends up kind of sounding like elevator music. And they managed to get a, an air of authenticity and a grit and an edge on this, on, on this stuff and also write very beautifully in the ballads. Now, th that's one of the challenges here, and I asked Warren what were some of the challenges as, as you know, in his, the music he's used to is kind of loose and groove oriented, what were some of the challenges in working with an orchestra? And I'm going to ask you, and you've probably done this many times, what are some of the challenges working with a rock band? Well, this is the, always the big uh, challenge is getting the two worlds to meet somewhere. And one of the things Warren hits on is, is, is the core of the problem. It is that what an orchestra does is play oh, amazingly difficult music, but always what's written down. We tend to stick with notation. You can't get 75 people to just kind of head over here because you decided to play an extra chorus of something. So it's about us having the flexibility to move along with them, but also them realizing that they got to do it the same way every time or they're going to leave the band in the dust. So no space jam tonight, no drum, no 20 minute drum solo? Well actually there is, but that's, they, they're really smart about the way they thought this thing through. I mean, uh, Warren is very serious about trying to present these concerts in a way that I think Jerry Garcia would approve of. Not, you know, one piece clap, one piece clap. You know, when he did it, it was basically a, a two hour happening, basically, on stage. And uh, so the, the tunes that you know are filled between by jams, free jams and improvisation by just the members of the trio without the orchestra. So it still has that feel of spontaneity of something new happening and uh, whatever, you know, this was a really masterfully put together project. Well, I, it, sitting through rehearsal, it, look, it sounded beautiful and it looked like you guys are having fun. So we're definitely looking forward to it tonight. Uh, you've worked with so many people in your years with the Pops and, and is there anyone that you would like to uh, work with and collaborate with in the future? Well, there's always people on that list, you know, the bucket list for, uh, for conductors. Uh, to bring to this orchestra, Clapton would be somebody who would really be amazing to bring to this orchestra because that's a level of artistry that we would love to support. Well, I'm sure Eric Clapton visits our website regularly and hopefully he'll see this. Keith Lockhart, maestro, Keith Lockhart in tie-dye here, uh, conductor of the Boston Pops for the Jerry Garcia Symphonic ce uh, Celebration tonight at Symphony Hall. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.